Joining me now is the Reverend Dr. William Barber. He's the co-chairman of the Poor People's Campaign. He's the president and senior lecturer of Repairers of the Breach and the architect of Moral Mondays. He's been leading and participating in marches, urging Congress to take action to protect voting rights in what's being called the season of nonviolent moral direct action. And the Reverend Doctor is racking up quite an arrest record. He, along with other protesters, were just arrested this week again for crowding and obstructing offices while protesting in D.C. Uh, Reverend Barber, I, I want to just pick up on what, what Representative Anchia said. He said, this isn't Bull Connor kind of stuff. This is digital. This is happening right now. You have said it other ways. You're saying it, Jim Crow. It's not Jim Crow now. It's James Crow Esquire. It's more sophisticated, but it's the same stuff. It is, and it's across the board, and it's impacting all Americans. I think we make a mistake when we frame this as just a black-brown issue. 56 million Americans would be would not would, would lose part of their right to ways to vote, who voted in ways other than election days, the very things that the For the People's Act would protect and state legislatures are trying to undo. We also have to always connect, connect it to the money, like Dr. King did. Uh, voting rights and economic justice are always connected. Voting is the bridge to those policies. And here we are, August the 6th, 7th, the 56th anniversary of the um, signing of the Voting Rights Act. It's been eight years since 2013, June 25th, 2,960 days today that the Congress could have fixed this. So when Manchin says he wants to fix this, he's not telling the truth. It could have worked on it for eight years. And we got to be real careful with these watered down bills. What we need is the bill that John Lewis wrote with his dying breath. That's why we said after the six, we were going to intensify. So we already got calls, Ali, to come to uh, West Virginia like we did in Texas. You know, this is the 100th year anniversary of the Blair Mountain fight in, when black and white coal miners fought together. And we're headed to West, West Virginia now. We cannot turn back on this now. This is too serious. It's time for the president to meet with a multiracial group of clergy, poor and low wealth people, economists and voting rights lawyers, go to the well of the Congress, reset this whole argument. It's about the Constitution, about our morality. He said he, to the PP and Poor People's Campaign he wanted to do it, but some of his staff don't seem to get it. Some of them think you can litigate out of this and mobilize, and that's not how we're going to win. We've got to have federal protection against this political insurrection going on in state county. So when it happens, when, when Merkley comes up with this bill and Manchin agrees he's going to support it, and Manchin goes and starts to get uh, see if they can get Republicans, who knows whether any uh, Senate Republicans will join into this thing. But let's say they agree to put aside the filibuster for the purpose of the bill that Merkley is writing, the new bill, the bill that you are referring to is possibly watered down. Would you support that versus nothing right now? Well, here's the thing. What are you talking about watering down? The bill in the For the People's Act, it first of all protects, protects uh, access to the ballot. Are you going to water down that? Are you going to take away a same day registration, automatic voter registration, uh, 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 multiple days of early voting? Uh, it, it deals with dark money. What are you going to do? Water that down? It deals with uh, uh, ethics. It deals with dealing with gerrymandering. What are you going to water down? The question is what's in it. And there, and he can't. The problem is you're not putting the first thing first. The first thing has to be I'm going to end the filibuster because all this other talk is moot if you're not going to deal with the filibuster. Senator Schumer, we said to him this week, uh, some poor low wealth voters and others, that all of these procedural votes and allowing people to vote without ending the filibuster is just stuff. I mean, it's just, you know, going through the motion. It's Washington two steps. you got to deal with the filibuster. So what should happen first is there should be an agreement. No infrastructure for bridges until we deal with the infrastructure of our democracy, agree to pass the For the People's Act and the Voting Rights Act restoration and $15 minimum wage. Let's, let's agree on that. Then let's look at, sure, there may be some changes, but right now there is no history that Manchin has, number one, that he could ever bring those Republicans. Number two, what he has proposed actually makes the bill so weak it doesn't deal with the problem. And thirdly, we're talking about the greatest attack on voting rights, said the president, since the Civil War. Why would you water down something that, that you're trying to fight, which is the greatest attack? You should not be watering it down. You should be strengthening it for the purpose of this democracy. This is not about Democrat and Republican, Alex. I share, you and I have often talked. Yep. This is about the future of this very nation and stopping 
the political policy insurrection that's going on inside of state capitals now, that we stopped the violent one on January the 6th. We've got to stop this one that's happening inside these state legislatures now. Well, you are out there drawing attention to this uh, every day, uh, Reverend Dr. William Barber. Good to see you again, as always. The Reverend Dr. William Barber is the co-chairman of the Poor People's Campaign. He's the president and senior lecturer for Repairers of the Breach.